What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick take on some fragrances that I plan on wearing kind of daily wear stuff in the fall. This is stuff that I tend to reach for, that I gravitate to, because where I'm at, it's already starting to cool down just a little bit. We're getting cooler evenings and, you know, daytime, we're looking at the upcoming week's forecast, for example, is going to be in the high 70s, starting to slowly creep into that milder fall weather. So I figured I'd grab 10 of my personal favorites that I plan on reaching for sooner rather than later. It's a bunch of really good designer stuff. So stay tuned. Starting with one of the better fall iris fragrances. There's no secret that I'm a big fan of iris. And here we're talking about Givenchy Gentlemen. This is Eau de Parfum Boisse. This is a gorgeous, soft, creamy, and powdery iris. But not near as creamy as the standard Eau de Parfum. It doesn't have that tolu balsam to give that creamy, balmy feel. This is a bit more spicy and woody. Much more daytime appropriate, though this will still work well in the evenings for sure there's other options as far as iris that i would prefer to reach for in evening situations this is just a lovely fragrance not too strong but above average in longevity not a powerhouse in projection kind of average stuff maybe a little bit better in the first hour and a half to two hours then it settles into a pretty nice sillage overall nothing that's really strong and in your face but it can definitely grab some attention and it's more on the unique side because it's a spicy iris fragrance there isn't just loads of spicy woody iris fragrances out there this one's very well done not going to break the bank it's a solid designer it's a pretty good quality for a kind of you know average price point from discounters again that's Givenchy gentlemen eau de parfum boisse so fall does mean another specific genre for me it's blue fragrance season for me for the most part more so light blue in the summer but in the fall and spring that's when i typically wear blue fragrances the most and fragrances like versace dylan blue are going to come out and play this is going to get much more wear in the fall season during the day for me this is a little bit more dense heavy and rich than i like for super hot days though it does work fine in the summer as a daytime scent i have other blue fragrances that have a little bit more freshness to it that i like a little bit more in the warmer months so fall season that's when i tend to reach for this beautiful citrus up top it does have a little bit of a smoky nuance has that shower gel appeal from a nice hit of ambroxan it's got a little bit of a spicy tone in the backdrop of course there's a nice strong woody presence here performance is fan freaking tastic and it's a super versatile daily wear fragrance kind of the poster child one of anyways the poster children for this particular video topic this is one that i just you know probably it's definitely one of the five blue fragrances i wear the most i'm not going to say it's the one that i wear the most but it's one of for sure this is really good stuff no hidden gem type of stuff here this is a very popular mass appealing crowd pleaser that a lot of people get some joy out of. It does pull a nice compliment from time to time. If you haven't tried it yet, you're probably missing out. It's great for the fall season. That's Versace Dylan Blue. You'll kind of see a theme here with slightly spicier fragrances. Kind of, They're kind of my forte in the fall season. And this one is nothing short of nice and spicy with a little bit of a fruity tone. It's a little sweet. We are talking about Hugo Boss. This is Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum, last year's Flanker. This is gorgeous. This is a gorgeous scent. You still get that spicy warm apple type of feel from the original, only it's cardamom here instead of cinnamon. So it's got a little bit more of a sweet spice. There's a nice hit of sage, strong sage feel, kind of giving it a blue fragrance feel overall, but more of a spicy blue fragrance to be honest. Still has that woody backbone that you've come to expect from this line. Like I said, it smells like it belongs in the Boss Bottled line, which they are guilty of from time to time, veering kind of far off the path of the original's DNA, where here is it's, it's kind of the original's DNA reimagined for the modern day, because it's more of a blue style mass appealing fragrance. But it, like I said, it doesn't veer too far off from, like I said, the spicy apple woody smell, kind of that warm apple pie feel from the original. It's just kind of modernized with the sage and the use of cardamom because cardamom's heavily used in the last you know decade or so. It's used a lot in men's fragrances and this one's fantastic. Above average performer without being a beast. 
kind of the sweet spot for me. Definitely a great daytime scent in the fall. It's Hugo Boss Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum. Wore this one a few nights ago. You can't go wrong here. This is one of the more popular designer takes on the Creed Aventa style DNA out there. We are talking about Montblanc's Explorer. Like I said, I just wore this a few nights ago. Wife loves when I wear this one. This is one of her personal favorite fragrances in my collection. You get a lovely bergamot hit. A little bit of citrus up top. I believe there's a little bit of leather in here. If not, there's a leathery feel. There's some ambroxan. It does provide kind of that black currant feel and tart fruitiness, but I, if I remember correctly, there is none of that in the note breakdown. It's interesting how they captured a lot of similarities in the essence of that DNA, the Creed Aventus DNA, without using a majority of those notes and kind of carving its own path with kind of running parallel to the scent profile. Performance on me is about average here. It's nothing that's beastly, though I have had people tell me they get fantastic performance with this one. Others get weak performance. You never know what it's going to do on your skin until you spray it on your skin. But it's definitely one that I'll kind of veer away from wearing in the evenings like I have been doing and transition into more of a daytime scent as the weather kind of gets a bit more mild. Uh, this is a really good one. Not amazing and you know the greatest thing since sliced bread but it's definitely a very good fragrance that i do get some use out of that had to grow on me admittedly but i do appreciate it for what it is we'll be wearing it during the day this fall that's mont blanc explore the better of the two dolce and gabbana k's here we are talking about dolce and gabbana k eau de parfum so i love a good juniper fragrance this is a really good juniper fragrance a lot of geranium here provides a bit of a minty, slightly earthy tone to it. A lot of woods. There's a little bit of fruitiness here that kind of provides a darker, light, sweet, fruity tone. This is actually very nice. It does have a bit of a synthetic top note, but that does calm down. And like I said, it settles into a heavy hit of juniper. It gives that gin type of smell. Not quite a heavy, boozy hit, but kind of gin and tonic water type of feel overall. A little fizzy if you will, because it's such a heavy juniper. And like I said, geranium, that's the biggest combo, the juniper-geranium combo. Uh, relatable to Rocha Loam, which in its own right is a fantastic fragrance, but for the fall season, I like this one a little bit better because it's a little bit heavier, a little bit denser, a little bit darker wear. Uh, whereas spring, summer, I think Rocha Loam is fan freaking tastic. Not saying you can't wear that one in the fall too. It's a great year-round scent. It's just... I kind of specifically wear this one in the fall. I haven't wore it in several months at this point, so it's one I'm kind of eager to spray on my skin. If you weren't a fan of the EDT, which a lot of people weren't, I actually like it, um, this might be the one for you because it's definitely a little bit more matured, a little bit richer, wears a bit heavier. It's a better fragrance overall. If you're just going to get one or just sample one just to try the DNA, definitely check out Dolce & Gabbana K EDP. It is the better of the two. Now this one may surprise a lot of you because most people would wear this as an evening wear scent, which it does shine in the evenings, but because of its nice mildly floral dry down that kind of takes away the boozy spice at the top, I do like this as a slightly semi-casual to semi-formal daytime scent in the fall because I like my spicy fragrances this time of year. We're talking about Bulgari's Man in Black. Such a gorgeous fragrance. Like I said, boozy, spicy. It will remind you of Spice Bomb with a little bit a little bit more character, to be honest with you. It's not quite as one or two dimensional as Spice Bomb can be. Love Spice Bomb. Can't wait to wear that one too. But this one, you get a lovely hit of some rum. And like I said, there's this nice tuberose iris combo in the dry down that gives us it's more tuberose than it is iris, lightly powdery, creamy, soft floral tone, light wood feel, where the dark, boozy, spicy tone at the top does settle down. This is one fragrance that definitely changes on my skin. What you get in the top is definitely not what you end up with a few hours into the life of the fragrance. It's not an overwhelming smell. It is very attractive. This is one that will pull some positive attention if and when somebody can smell it on your skin. Because uh, like I said, everybody's experience is different. Some people get phenomenal performance. Some people get weak performance. I kind of fall somewhere in the middle in that six to seven hour range in longevity, which falls into the sweet spot for me. And then projection's really heavy in that first hour. Then into the second hour, it starts to slowly calm down where you settle into a nice moderate to mild sillage 
for the rest of the life of the fragrance. Definitely dresses up really well. Like I said before, it's, it's great in the evenings, but for me personally, I think it's a fantastic fall scent if you're really into spices. And florals. I mean, I'm a fan of both. It's Bulgari, Man in Black. So not every day in the fall is so mild and cool that I can wear these heavier, spicy fragrances, dense florals, nice and powdery stuff. Sometimes I still want something a little fresh. And in those instances, this is one that I was wearing in the spring, put away for the, the summer, and I'm ready to pull back during the daytime for the fall. This is H24 from Hermes. I'm one of the few in the proud that really like this fragrance. Even though the note breakdown will lead you to believe a certain way about this fragrance, it does smell inherently like there's some citrus, kind of like the rind of a bergamot type of smell. I've always said that, even on paper, it comes across that way. Very cold and metallic, lightly floral. There's this narcissist note. It's got metallic notes in it. Um, it's an interesting scent. It does smell unnatural. It does not smell like a natural oil fragrance at all, but it's very strange the way it works. It's appealing to me. I've always liked it. Kind of an average to slightly above average type of fragrance. Six to eight hour range. Might get lucky and get eight hours some days, usually in that six to seven hour range on my skin. And it's very versatile. It does have a little bit of class to it. This can dress up, on, like I said, on those warmer fall days because there's still gonna be days when, like I said, when you're gonna sweat for sure if you're outside or going out and about. And fragrances like this will do the trick and it will separate you from the crowd in the event you're in a crowded place or a busy place that has a lot of people, whether it be a workplace setting or out and about do running errands, whatever have you, or meeting up with friends for drinks, whatever the case may be, this will work. It is a little bit on the unique side. Uh, it's polarizing. Some people can't stand this fragrance, but like I said in the beginning, I'm one of the few in the proud that absolutely loves this fragrance. So during the day, I will be wearing this from time to time. H24 from Hermes. At this point, some people will say boring and oh my God, Sauvage. Yes, we're talking about Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. You see the trend. I like spices in the fall. This is, this and Elixir are the two spicy versions of Sauvage. This is more so true to the original Sauvage DNA. This is another one that I kind of strictly wear in the fall. So I kind of look forward to wearing this one. I've been wearing the Parfum, believe it or not, in the summertime, in the spring and winter, the two past seasons. I was wearing the Elixir. This is the one I have not been wearing, so I'm kind of eager to pull it out. And at the end of the day, don't let anybody tell you, oh, it's played out, everybody wears it, yada, yada. The only time where I kind of see fit where maybe you want to steer away from that is I've had situations where I had six coworkers, I counted it when I was there, six coworkers that this was their signature scent every day. It was either the EDT or the EDP. I wouldn't touch Sauvage during those times. Now, I'm no longer around those guys, so I look forward to wearing this. So, wear what you like. And I'll tell you what, in the fall, I absolutely love wearing Sauvage EDP. Beautiful citrus shower gel smell, but a lot of peppery spice here. It's much, much spicier. There's a nice light, almost vanilla type of sweetness in the deep dry down, but it's not a very sweet fragrance. It, like I said, it still maintains a lot of that freshness just a spicier take on the freshness of the EDT, and it's a monster performer for me personally. I don't play the batch go game. I just buy a fragrance and wear it and see how it's going to react on my skin. But there's definitely one I'm going to be pulling out this fall, probably more than you're expecting. Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Citrus, florals, amber, a little bit of leather, a bit on the synthetic side, a little bit youthful, but not too youthful. Very enjoyable fragrance. We're talking about Diesel's Only the Brave. This is another one that I kind of pull out around fall. This is definitely leans a little bit to the blue fragrance side of things. It's so enjoyable though. It's a little powdery. I do like powdery scents in the fall. I think that's what kind of makes me gravitate to this one because you still get some freshness in the top. Like I said, a little bit of citrus up top, but they have, I believe it's a violet note that provides that floral powdery tone. Um, and it has a little bit of an ambery, almost resinous type of feel. And I think it's the amber leather combo. There may be a resin in there. I just don't recall it off the top of my head. Performance is above average. Not one that I would call a beast, but like I said, six to eight hour fragrance again. Uh, I get plenty of staying power with this one without it being too overwhelming, but I do have to say the first hour and a half of this fragrance is pretty damn strong and can be cloying if oversprayed. So 
tread lightly. It depends on how it acts on your skin, but this stuff is pretty damn stout on my skin in the first few hours, and then it hangs out for a long time. This is one that you can get for a really good price. This is the cheapest fragrance in this video. 75 ml like this that I got in a white tester box, you can get in the 30 to sub $30 price point, and it does the trick. It's extremely versatile. It's a fantastic daytime scent in the fall. So I'll definitely be pulling this one out. Maybe if you haven't tried it, maybe you should. Secure a sample and check it out. It's diesel, only the brave. Now, I just recently got this one. My man Jay over at Icon de Parfum sent me a surprise package of some discontinued fragrances. And this one's in the $100 plus dollar price point on eBay. It's absolutely not worth that price. I'm not telling you guys to go seeking it. But it's one that I'm eager to wear because I think it's a fantastic daytime scent for the fall. We are talking about Ferrari Silver Essence. I am shocked at how much I enjoy this one. I gave it an 8 out of 10 in my first impressions video when I busted this bad boy out the box. Very, very smoky, spicy, a lot of woodiness to this fragrance. It's beautiful. It's more fresh spicy than it is warm to my nose. And there's a few different things adding a smoky touch. There's Gayak wood, if I remember correctly. And there is an incense note. There's birch. It's beautiful. This fragrance speaks to me. I had no idea it was this good. You may not feel it's this good, but for me and my taste, this is a damn good fragrance. I'm very excited to wear this one. The test spray that I sprayed on my skin the other night, it was probably about four or five hours before I took a shower at that point, and it was still pumping off my skin pretty good. I wouldn't call it a heavy type of sillage at that point, but stronger than I anticipated it to be in the four to five hour mark. So based on just that alone, it's looking like it's going to be an above average performer. I don't think it's going to be a beast of any kind, but probably fall into the six to eight hour range, which like I said before, that's the sweet spot for me. I like smoky, floral, powdery, and spicy this time of year. This provides spicy and smoky and curves that itch for some of my favorite styles of fragrance and accords for daytime in the autumn season. So definitely good stuff. I will be reaching for this one sooner rather than later. It's Ferrari Silver Essence. Well, that's the 10 that I have for you today. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. What are some of the fragrances that you kind of strictly pull out for the fall season that are just some great daytime wares for you in your collection? Or did you see and hear something in this video that kind of sparked your interest and maybe you feel like you need to sample it and maybe get your nose on it in some kind of way and see if it's for you? I'd love to read about that in the comments. Until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 I'm excited to wear in the daytime this fall, you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.